Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. You know, one of the things I love about faith, everything, even the nation, can be a failed state. One act of faith, just one, just one act of faith will turn everything around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, one of the things, what we're looking at this morning is the wisdom of God that shall change the wisdom of men. We've seen in this nation a man who did not contest for election, who did not spend money, did not campaign, sworn in legitimately. Don't be despaired. <laughs> Man's agenda can be rolling. When God's agenda steps in, everything will suspend. And he will. He said he ruleth. How? In the affairs of men. And that's one of the reasons why I love faith. The most important topic in this life. He said, oh, 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is the greatest. There is no dispute. Love is the greatest. Faith is actually taking you to the place of love. For they say God, they didn't say God is faith. They say God is love. So faith is making you become like God. But without faith, you cannot be like God. The Bible says in Romans 1, 16 to 17, it's for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For therein, in that gospel, the righteousness of God, the character, the nature, and the ability of God is exposed. How? From faith to faith. So faith is still the most important. Faith is more important than even being the president of the United States of America. Hebrews 11 says, without faith, you cannot make God step in. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith is more important than time. While you are calculating time, men of faith short time and act. And when they come back, then they release time back for the ordinary citizens to be working with. <laughs> they told Jesus, they said, Mary said, they've run out of wine. Jesus said, the time given for wine to be given after expiration has not come. Mary said, I'm not dealing with ordinary men. <laughs> Say, let's suspend the time, give them wine, and return back time. Said, okay, get the pots, fill it with water. And the water became wine. Time was suspended. Bible says, the Syrophoenician woman in Matthew 15 came and said, oh Lord, my daughter is grievously vexed. That's where prophecy, they say prophecy will fail. They said it will fail. They've never said faith will fail. Never. You see prophecy fail. Jesus said, I am sent by prophetic direction only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman said, I know I'm not the lost sheep of Israel. I'm the, from the outside of the commonwealth of Israel, but I have failed to suspend your prophecy. Jesus, you are the son of God, but the prophecy on your head, I suspend it. He said, you suspended it. Thy daughter is well. So as I go out, I return it. So now, your healing power is only for the ordinary men of Israel. However, the non-ordinary men who walk by faith outside of Israel will take what belongs. The choices and the juiciest will take it. Praise Jesus. We say faith is more important than money. They say money answereth all things. <laughs> now, it simply means, I've seen people, I, I believe, those of you who know me very well know I believe in medicine. I believe in medicine, but it fails too. We've seen it fail. Only faith never fails. So somebody with a stage 4D cancer and they say, there is no solution 
medically. Now, in the case of destiny, we were told that the hole in the heart has developed what they call pulmonary hypertension. And there is no medical solution. And she has maximum between three to a maximum of six months to leave. That is money giving you an answer. Now we switch to faith. Faith doesn't give answer. Faith solves. <laughs> money gives answer. But faith what? Solves. <laughs> Praise God. Praise. That's the joy of generations. A mother of thousands. And of ten thousands. The two that they did surgery for died. They said the surgery was successful. They returned to Nigeria. And their parents bought gifts that they would use when they died. The one they said has no way forward. Nine years still living. 20 years we still live. 50 years we still live. 92. My, my daughter asked me, say, how old are you? I said, I'm 92. I said, you're 92. I said, I'm speaking what God said I will live up to. Yeah. Say, how will you do that? I'll just need to operate the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that immunes you from the law of sin and death. And I'll walk on top of death. And when I'm 92, I'll negotiate my exit. It's just faith. And that's why I love faith. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Listen, all of you here, listening to me, whether through the screen or sitting here, none of you, even if you want to die now, you will not die. The Bible says, and they sought for death. They sought for death. And they did what? Fled. No, they didn't elude them. He fled. Look, when death see you, it will flee. Amen. Have you seen young children dying? Right? All over the place? No, it won't happen to you. Amen. Why? Because the anointing of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus rests on your head. And it immunes you from the law of sin and death. And so it says, so death shall not have dominion over you in the name of Jesus. I told you last week Sunday of a lady who I told to, I just said, you, you got to sow your gold. It looked like a scam. <laughs> and these last days, the move of God is going to look like a scam. Do you know that the only solution to the killings in the Niger, um, the Middle Belt, it looks like a scam too? Ask me, what's the solution to those young Christians being killed in the north? So, into the law of the spirit of life. So, what if the Fulani Hesman come? Say, let them come. Let them come. <laughs> Praise Jesus. You saw what happened when they surrounded Elisha. Armies. And they just went blind. <laughs> and again, you said, you will give them food to eat. And you make it clear your life is not in their hands. And I said, sow your gold. And it looked like a scam. And she brought the gold. And after about a month, she said, oh, are you at home? I said, yes. So I'm coming to see you urgently. I was wondering what was the problem. She said, I just forgot one small gold somewhere. And I just remembered it. So I said, I should come and drop it now. And hey, I've given all my gold. I said, ooh. Then after a while, she said, there was an issue with the health. She had fibroid. I mean, if you know, fibroid is mutating now. It's becoming cancerous. Satan is deadly. It's mutating. When they say something is mutating, it's changing. It's changing. It's becoming cancerous. Many people are not just dying from fibroid. It's the cancerous fibroid. But it wasn't becoming cancerous. It wasn't cancerous before. It's just now. It's those demons mutating those fibroids. And they say they diagnose her with cancerous fibroids. That is malignant. It is spreading. So they have to operate urgently. When she called me, I said, do you feel pain? She said, no. Are you uncomfortable? She said, no. I said, ignore it. She ignored it. <laughs> it was diagnosed at Luth. And then after about three months, she said, I don't feel anything. I, don't, I should be feeling 
dizzy. What's wrong? I'm very normal. Say, so let me go to Lassoot for a double confirmation. She so went to Lassoot. Say, what did you say you have? He said, five. The cancer. He said, first, you say you have a fibroid. He said, we can't see any fibroid. He said, then the cancerous. There's nothing here. It's all vanished. Vanished, disappeared. But the sewing looked like a scam. Living in Christ Jesus will take the look of a scam. First Corinthians chapter 2. I'll read verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I believe, well, Deuteronomy, I think 24 says, some men have no faith. Is it Deuteronomy 6 or so? It says some men have no faith. But I believe everyone still has faith. It can't be so bad that you have no faith in nothing. Some have faith in something. Some tell you if they're traveling, which car are you taking? The BMW say, all right, I'm more comfortable. They have faith in that name. And they believe that vehicle is safer to travel where they're going to than, say, which car are you going? Say the God. Say, no. <laughs> Praise God. A lot of people are traveling by rail from Abuja to Kaduna. Why? They have faith that the bandits can't stop the train. And if they try with a gun to stand in front of the train, the train will grind them to powder. So many are going by train and not going by road because they say the road is not safe. Though the IG said it's safe now. So they have faith in the rail to save them from banditry than in the um, cars which they believe the bandits can throw nails on the floor and have the gun and overrun. So everybody exhibits faith in something. Technology. Some have faith in a guru who is going to die one day and rot and decompose. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Some have faith in the wisdom of Satan. I've seen people, they, I said, you don't eat crab. I said, why? She said, I notice when I'm climbing the ladder in life, people drag me down. And have you noticed Crabs always pull each other to climb. So I don't eat crabs. And I know once I don't eat crabs, once I climb, no one will drag me down. I ask another, why don't you eat chicken? He said, chicken scatters things. So I'm always scattered. You mean you've not seen it? <laughs> they have faith in the wisdom of Satan. Shockingly, there are Christians that do that. They say, don't wash in the night. You've not heard it before? Yes, Say, don't wash in the night. Whatever you make a law unto yourself rules over you. Ask somebody, show me in the word where it says don't wash in the night and I will not wash in the night. So if you can't see it, then it's not binding on me. It's a law that Satan makes and it has no effect on me. Praise God. That's why you see politicians, they come, they have more faith in the party in power than the opposition, right? They move from, like in Nigeria, they, a big wig in the south, south moves from PDP to APC. Unfortunately, that wizard failed him. He was knocked out completely. He had more faith in APC to deliver and the federal government than the people that would cast the votes. And the people told him, we decide who rules, not you. And they threw him out. And people are saying, it's not possible for this man to lose. Why? They say, Godfather. No, they don't win votes by Godfather. They win votes by tongue printing of the electorate. The electorate say, get out. <laughs> Praise God. Apparently, they had more faith in the Godfatherism than in the electorate. And the electorate said, no, we too have more faith in our ability to tongue print than your ability. Praise God. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. 
You can also have faith in God, which also is very elementary. You hear people say, I believe God will keep us safe. I believe God. And God is saying, grow up. We have to grow up and start having faith in what? The power of God. Not just in God. Hebrews 6 says, living again the elementary doctrines and principles of Christ Jesus. Let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Here, the Bible is saying, he didn't say don't have faith in God. He said, but look, it's time to put the faith in God aside and have faith in the wisdom of God. You know, someone was going to give birth. I said, pray for me. You say, you're still praising the faith towards God. I said, so for a smooth delivery. <laughs> so he said, you know, pray. He said, no need. Go in peace. And it was smooth. That's what God is calling in these last days. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the word power of God. We're going to solve Nigeria's problem by proclamations. I don't say we won't pray. Yeah, you pray. But it's not enough. We will make decrees. We will make pronouncements. So we said faith in God. So Moses, here is Pharaoh's army charging towards Moses. And here is the sea before Moses. And Moses called on God. What is wrong? That's normal. And God replied, why did you call on me? That means God is saying, you had no business in that state calling on me. I don't think Nigeria state is that bad yet. No, it's not that bad yet. When Jesus was in the boat and there was a great storm in Mark 5 and they went to wake, they said, why did you wake me up? You had no business waking me up. You had no business. Waking me up, crying to him is like prayer. You had no business crying in that situation. Why don't you just exhibit faith in the wisdom of God and the sea will beckon to your orders. You can have faith in the systems God created from his word. For example, Genesis 8.22, he says, Seed time and harvest shall not cease. The most attacked doctrine and the only solution to the problems on ground. I guess Satan must have inspired the attack on that doctrine, knowing that this is the doctrine that will solve the problem of these people. So he sent his own apostles to go ahead and attack it so that people will not yield to it. Look, the earth, you know, I, I used to abuse Solomon. That was the problem of this man. He said, nothing is new again. He said, as it was, so it is and so shall be. I said, but his mercies are new every morning. What's wrong with this man? What kind of wisdom? I now understand what he was saying. He said, what has been is what shall be. As a, what does that mean? He said, the earth is going through a cycle. He said, it finishes at a point. Then it starts again. He says, it starts again, like in the time of Noah. He said, then you will find desecration on the earth. You will find darkness on the earth, like in the days of Noah. It was desecration. Men mating with demons. He said, you will find such again. Darkness, killings. Then you will find men, but not in, in, in boat again, carrying anointings. That no matter how terrible you are, if you enter those anointings, if that anointing can be assessed through sowing, when you sow and you enter it, you'll be immune from judgment irrespective of what you do. So then after that, then the anointings will shift. And then you begin to see a downplay again to Enoch. And then to Abraham. Then God now says, now, except the earth walk by faith, no one will move forward. Then in the life of every man on earth, they can prosper and excel, but there will be one thing failing. One thing they need so much, it will never work until they operate by faith. And God used this to hold sovereignty and said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In this area, only faith will solve this. And we're back to the times of Abraham. And men begin to carry such mantles. And they begin to come and tell you. And when they come, like the time of Abraham, they will come and it was an instruction. This day you shall be called Abraham. They will come, they say the warfare is over. And when you believe that word, you just, that thing just comes to pass. All the struggle and the wisdom of men fails and it won't work. And by that command of that instruction, it will work. And you'll be wondering, you mean this is what we waited for six years? And one man just came and said, the warfare is over. Now go in peace. And it's solved. 
Just like that. And that's how Abraham's case was solved. And then we come to the time of Joseph, where no matter the pronouncement, if you don't buy those grain, if you don't sow, nothing will work. And he says the earth is in the time of Joseph. That's why I bring message to our Christian brothers in the north. You're wondering what will stop this Fulani headsman killing. It's just one thing, sowing. So what if you sow? It cannot touch you. Never. That grain, it's an anointing. And it will protect you. Sounds like a scam. I told you about a young man who had cancer. I enlisted people to pray for nine days. Every night I was praying 12 to 4, 12 to 5 in the night. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. Interceding. He still died. I said, Lord, what? He said, there was no seed. Lord said, there was no seed. There was no seed. Then another with the same cancer. The same cancer. Cancer. I said, drop a seed, he drops it. I wanted to visit, he said, we are busy. Since August, still, still said they are busy. Glory. Hallelujah. So you can have faith in these systems. And God is saying, have faith in the systems I've created. Stop calling on me. In the, those days when they went to Pharaoh, when the days of Joseph, anyone went to Pharaoh, what did Pharaoh say? Did he answer that prayer? He said, no, go to Joseph. Go to Joseph. When they went to God, in the time of Moses, he said, go to whom? Moses. And God, he said, when they come, he said, no, go to the systems. Go to the systems. You can live to 92, 95 in good divine health, and one may not live beyond 30. It has nothing to do with God. It has to do with what you have faith in. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In Matthew 10, 19 to 21, it says, Give and sow for yourself treasures in heaven. In Luke 12, 33, it says, This system faileth not. In Psalm 126, it says, You shall doubtless return with your harvest. So it is a wisdom that does not fail, but it does not make sense. He says, for we see the wisdom of God, foolishness to the wise and a stumbling block to the religious. But we see it as the power of God. How can you sow and you can't die? How do you explain it? Hallelujah. The wisdom of men says, this is cancer. You are going to die. Then you give. And the wisdom of God says, now nah, you will not die. And God says, have faith in my wisdom. It works. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, I was wondering, and I found out that as we have earthly accounts, Zenith Bank, GTB, oh, I should have mentioned the other banks, why didn't you call our own Diamond, Sontra, or something like that? Fidelity, access diamond, access diamond, and on and on and on. Let the other banks pardon me. You're all doing fine. Praise God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And as you have an account, you know, when I listen to people who say, don't give. If you have a DSTV, oh, DSTV should pay me for this, right? Yes. Yes. I, I'm going to collect, um, what do you call it? Royalty. I'll make sure I call it royalty for this. Now, if you have DSTV and you are either on classic or premium, it should increase the royalty for mentioning that. Praise God. <laughs> now, and your subscription expires, you have to renew it. Now, if you go to a shop that puts DSTV agents, if it's a true agent, if it's a true agent of DSTV, and you pay, you will get an alert from DSTV acknowledging that you are paid and they are working on your reconnection. Yes, Each time you give to a true minister of God, heaven acknowledges 
that you have given and we are working on your situation. Now, if you give and there's no acknowledgement from heaven, then you give to the wrong person. Then that's giving to a fake. The solution is not don't give. The solution is find the genuine and give. But they said, don't give. They're all fake. No. DSTV can have all agents fake. Then something is wrong with DSTV. Right? Because they can't be everywhere. It says, Paul said in Philippians 4, that you send a sweet aroma and offering to me that will abound into your heavenly account. He said to Cornelius, thy arms are before God. We acknowledge when you gave it, it is before us. So we have dispatched Gabriel to come and we have sent him to tell Peter to come and meet you and address your need in life. When you gave, it's before us. The account of Abel is called eternal account. Permanent. It doesn't run dry. He said by which the guilty gave 6,000 years ago is still speaking. Then someone says, don't give. That's your enemy. What they should teach you is the true treasurers of God who can receive on behalf of God. And when you give to them, heaven will send you a text. We've acknowledged your seed. We are working on your request. Praise God. There's some things you need to know about the wisdom of men that God is warning you not to have faith in it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 6, it says the wisdom of men and the wisdom of Satan come to naught and it fail. Now he said, seed time and harvest will not cease. He says, a, he said, give and sow to have a bag in, in the uh, arms in the heavenly which works not old. He said in Psalm 126, when you give, you shall doubtless return. Then he now says in Luke 12, he says, which faileth not. So it is a wisdom of God. So if you want to have faith in something, you can have faith in sowing because it's a wisdom of God that works. He says the wisdom of men does not work. Do you know why? Number one, the wisdom of men faileth. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 6, it will come to naught. Let me give you an example of the wisdom of men. A lady came and said, <laughs> oh, I love God. Ah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, when we find a stone in somebody's womb, it's still not a problem. What is stronger than stone? Is it diamond? When I find a diamond in somebody's womb, I say, let's go and pray. Let's seek God. Because he said, God can from stones raise children to Abraham. So, five broad children be an issue. Because it's not as strong as stones. It's like a, like, a, um, like a jelly, it can be cracked. If you put a hammer, it will break into pieces. You can't break stones like that. So a stone in the womb is not an issue. Diamond in the womb is an issue because it's stronger than stone. And we don't have a witness of that. A 92-year-old woman might be an issue. The witness we have is 90. If the 92-year-old comes, we might need to call on God. We don't have any witness of 92, but we have witness of 90. If you call on God of 90, he will not answer you. Say, I have a witness. Go and use my wisdom to solve it. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.